Hi right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at a brand new paint set. Gruffy Crow. So, I've never been one for the whole non-metallic metals. And as far as painting metals go, uh, I've always tended towards a sort of Games Workshop base, uh, followed by maybe a P3 or similar uh, highlight. And I've uh, been using these same few paints for quite a while. Um, so I was quite excited uh, when Darkstar offered to send me uh, one of their paint sets. Uh, so these are dropper bottle paints. Uh, they are the Darkstar Molten Metals. I believe they work in triads, and there's a little bit here in the description they've given me uh, about how to use the uh, paints and just what washes and things to use. So this could be quite interesting. Um, so let's have a look at the paints, and maybe we'll get to try them out. Uh, this is a pretty cool box. Don't know if there's a easy way to open this. On the back of the box here, we do have a list of all the paints. Uh, so we've got metals, stones, and some washes down the bottom here. And one thing I've noticed on the packaging already is that this uh, can be buffed to a high shine. That could be interesting. Certainly something I want to test out. Okay, here is the thing. It's quite a cool case. Let's see if I can get the whole thing in. Now that's posh. Uh, I'll notice there is some more spare holes in this thing um, and I have started moving towards model color paints a little bit uh, so it could be quite a useful thing for taking paints around we've got a different style of lids here it sounds like we've got agitators in these as well which is probably good with them being metallics picking them out at random we've got some absolutely gorgeous looking things and things like this aged copper I can certainly see uh, using rather than the warp bronze it's got more of that style of the old tin bits maybe I own in my paint collection and I'm just looking at them in front of me now uh, probably like four gold this is more gold here than I own already so this I'm a bit um, what's the world overwhelmed by this at the moment that's cool we even have uh, some thinners here as well which might come in handy okay so I'm gonna pr print off some minis uh, and some of the bits and pieces uh, and we'll try out some of these um, we'll maybe do some comparisons to the paints I already have and we'll see how we get along uh, sort of doing the washes and because uh, the washes are interesting I mean I'm looking here we've got a Dickensian shadow and a midnight shroud and a murky mire I'm wondering if these are similar to my sort of soft tone uh, dark tone and strong tone, that I, well strong tone and dark tone that I currently use uh, so that might be interesting to see how similar and how nice they are because I quite like these army painter ones these are the only army painter paints that I use, the uh, the washes so yeah let's create some minis and see what we can do with these okay I wasn't able to jump into it quite as thick, quick as I thought uh, what I've done here is I've sorted it into some of the triads uh, some of the triads sort of overlap uh, so I wasn't able to sort of do all of them, uh, but I checked on the website to see which ones uh, look like something I'd use. Uh, for instance, this aged copper, copper, polished copper, fairly straightforward. We've got a cool pewter graphite silver uh, that I reckon is going to be a pretty standard thing. And then we've got a gold, gold, gold combo there, which I think is what I'm going to use on the robot. Nice bright colours. And a steel set as well here. I did notice on the website that the dark colour was second, which really confused me to start with. Uh, but I've seen that kind of painting before, sort of mid-tones, low light, high light. That's not how I'll be using these. That's never a style of painting I can get to grips with, to be honest. And I actually thought it might be interesting to catch on camera me using these for the first time. So I'm just going to use one of the smaller coins. So I've got one of my coins, uh, and we've got this one, I'm going to try this one first, blackened, bronze, bronze, antique gold. This is one I can see me using uh, quite a bit, it's my sort of set of colours. Brush wise, metallics tend to ruin brushes quite badly, so I'm going to use one of these uh, makeup brushes that I like from Primark, which are really good for getting into lots of nooks and crannies, good cover coverage. One thing I noticed, obviously they're metallics, so I'm going to mix the hell out of them, uh, but they sound like they've got uh, 
agitators in, which is really good. They've also included some metallic thinners here, uh, which could be useful. I'm just kind of just about getting on board with using fitters for my other paints at the moment. So this, my initial thought is that seems quite thick. It's interesting sort of texture to it. I can't place my finger on what it is about it. But so far on this nice dark one, the coverage seems amazing. Now these days I tend to paint over gray. So it will be interesting to see how these work over gray as well. So I'll do some tests for that in a sec. But yeah, happy with that so far. And a second coat appears to have pulled up the richness a bit higher. So I'm going to leave that to dry. And then I'll do a heavy highlight with the bronze and a final dry brush with the antique gold. What I have learned really quickly is, as far as getting out the dropper bottles goes, I've not quite nailed exactly how much I need for one of these coins. But a tiny amount is all you need. kind of works better going on almost dry than trying to... You can't put a thick coat of this on. So sort of two dry coats seems to be working better. Who would have ever thought that two thin coats of a paint would work better? With just the bases down, actually, uh, there is quite a big difference between black and bronze and aged copper, for instance. I am feeling like that is not hugely different, but noticeable. Uh, but blue steel and graphite are quite different as well but I am gonna to have to be quite careful this is not how I normally paint putting paints back in a specific location so uh, I'm actually struggling but I am having to pay quite close attention to get these all back in the same spots to do four at a time my general instinct is when I'm done with the paint is just to put it over there so yeah I'm trying to be scientific here guys okay so I've done all the layers my first thought, it maybe it's because I was using the wrong brush and it wasn't quite dry brushing as well as I liked, but there wasn't much difference uh, between the shades when you actually got them on, especially some of them. But this one, the blue steel, baroque and bright steel, I really like the way that came out. That is stunning. That's really good looking and remember that I would usually use something like this like a wash um, so possibly like yeah like base wash and then go back in with the base whereas this is just three different paint colors that I'm sold on for sure the silver one I said there's a lot of other silvers here that could take some more tweaking certain angles it's actually quite dark going up to quite bright silver so it does have something about it that you wouldn't normally see but i don't know i'm just not loving the color it's come out as the copper actually is good that's surprisingly good said so it's one of the ones with better contrast but still the individual layers really weren't too dissimilar from each other uh, but the combined effect definitely working and look how shiny that is like it looks a lot shinier on the camera I must admit that it looks in real life but they're pretty shiny in real life and then the bronze that's the pr that's all right I don't know what bronze is meant to look like I've also done this gold one Regency to royal to braid gold once again not huge differences in shades between them but a very rich color I would probably rather have more contrast but this is probably more realistic I also spent a bit more time doing it on this guy and what was quite interesting about this is when I first painted him the first layer he looked all right but then as it dried it definitely got a lot brighter so here is the games workshop one so this is well half games workshop half p3 this is my normal combination if I want to do bright gold and it looks fine you like taken on its own looks all right it's quite shiny it's kind of golden but this guy I don't know how well the camera's picking that up but he practically glows that is insane so I'm gonna keep painting these I think I might even try and make him even golder we've got uh, 
some more golds here, including like a, a pale gold. I wonder if that is a really fine highlight or will work. So I'm still absolutely blown away by how many options there are here. But even just... So, I mean, this has had three different layers, and this has just had the two that I'd normally do. But, yeah, I said I'd say there's definitely just something a little bit more just has a bit more wow factor. I will fully, though, stick up for this Retributor armor, which is, I mean, goes over anything. It's a fantastic paint. I love it. So I'm going to paint up uh, a few more of these bits and pieces, have a bit more of an experiment, try and do some stuff uh, how I do it on a normal model, maybe with a bit more contrast. Uh, and I'll be doing that while these are drying. I'm going to keep these laid out as they are. And then I'm going to try and have a go at maybe buffing them a bit, see if we can make them even shinier. So the little uh, lettery thing does suggest, to be honest, uh, the royal gold with a uh, Victorian palace. So one thing we haven't played with is these shades. So it'd be interesting to see how these function as well. One thing we can look at right now, though, is coverage. So this is like a, a medium gold. So just a bog standard. It says classic gold, it's just gold. I've got a fully dry brush here. I'm just going to see how well I can get this to cover just straight over the black. This is going to be our treasure chest. That's quite impressive. I'd expect this is one of the darker ones or the sort of the ones that are kind of designed for bases and stuff but just a random straight gold straight over black I'm happy with that because I noticed while I was putting it on before there is it does if you look at the the bag here you know it's quite transparent so I was worried that if you were trying to put it over black it would look kind of streaky but really no with a little bit of work So the trick is definitely seems to be not putting too much paint on at once. Now I did notice in the letter there was quite a lot of references to airbrushing. Obviously I don't do that. Can't be bothered. I feel like that's a whole hobby in itself. I know I already have enough hobbies. But I've always said these makeup brushes are the next best thing. I'm going to throw one of the washes over that in a second. Well, actually I might do a second coat just to get it completely pure. The coverage is pretty amazing. As I said I didn't really have a problem with any of these or even on the actual figure, the, the initial coverage. Okay, it's about 24 hours later, and everything's had time to fully dry, I guess, now. Uh, and I've gone and found myself a microfiber cloth, nice fresh one. And we're going to see if it makes any difference, giving these a bit of a rub. Oh, I don't know that. Let's compare it to that side. There's definitely a bit more of a gleam there. Let's try one of the brighter ones. So currently, it looks much the same. There's nothing coming off on the cloth at all, but there's possibly just a tad more of a shine. If I was making some kind of prop, I would definitely do this, because that definitely adds something. Got the shiny gold one. Not a huge difference, but there is definitely something to it. I don't know if I already mentioned it, but I did notice uh, last night that when I painted initially, the colours weren't all that impressive, and then as they dried, they got brighter and more sort of metallic. And if we look again at the Games Workshop line versus this one, I said the camera doesn't really pick it up, but there's definitely something a bit more luminous about that. Earlier today, I did ask on my Discord uh, what people thought I should try uh, just to test these out. And some of the ideas seemed like very good. One of them was to see how well they chip. I'm not sure exactly how to test that, but I'm going to just sort of rub them together, pretend they're figures in a case. And I would say they're full. Oh, there we go. But I was quite aggressive with that corner there, but just generally sliding off each other. We're not having too much trouble. But with the corner of that one, we did manage to chip the nose there. So this is a quite a sharp blade. 
So I'd say not easy to chip. That's not, it doesn't want to come off. Another one thing to try was putting a wash or speed paint on them. So this is the uh, bronze and gold one. So if I was doing this on a model, I'd probably at some stage put something like this uh, dark tone, in fact not dark tone, strong tone uh, wash on something like this. So let's see what happens if I put this on. Well, first of all, that looks absolutely fabulous. I do like my army painter washes, but the question wasn't whether or not it looks fabulous. Uh, it was whether or not that will rub back off. So I'm going to leave that just a little while. I don't want it to dry, um, but I do want it to kind of sink in, see if it's going. And then I'm going to try and use this kitchen towel to rub off the metallic. And yes, that wash has somewhat worked like a paint stripper, allowing me to expose that black undercoat underneath. I mean, once again, being quite aggressive with it, more so than I would if this was a model. If we just do the other side quick. There's no, I'm just over brushing this. And then I'm gonna use this white uh, tray. I don't think there's any metallic in this paint. So it's not like it's instantly air reactivating. We can definitely use washers over it. We would just need to keep our fingers away. Uh, while that was drying. I don't have much in the way of speed paint. I think this polished silver poly, this polished silver is one of the few I actually have. So I'm going to throw a bunch of that on just down this side here. I will say for something called polished silver, oh, once again the camera's not really picking it up, but it's certainly not as polished as what we've got on this side. I've got my kitchen towel again. And again, rubbing on the wet paint has caused some of it to come up. So something is activated in there but again not anything that I think we'd actually do in normal model sort of procedures I was also asked how well it would mix uh, with other paint so something I do very rarely is make a sort of metallic color sometimes on sci-fi stuff I'll do something like this so we're getting a nice pigmented red and I'd normally add something nice and bright silvery well that's very bright I forgot how pearlescent that one was and we've made a colour that I'm going to call Barbie's Rollerblades. So I'd say that's mixed and painted on quite nicely. I mean, I'd possibly also say it's a ghastly colour. So the main paint I used to do this with, uh, was sort of Citadel, was the Mithril Silver. And I think that has given me a more metallic effect than uh, that used to. So if I ever need to do this for anything, I painted some Christmas baubles last year in a nice metallic green. Uh, this is what I'd use now, I think. However, there might be better options we might see in a second. As far as mixing them together goes, I can't see that being a problem. They are... I also can't see why you would, because, well, especially if you had the whole range like this, but maybe if you didn't have the whole range, let's see if they go together nicely. Oh, that's a lovely colour I just made, actually. That was a mixture of the bronze and polished copper. Reminds me of the Screaming Bell, actually, that I use sometimes. I will say, I am a bit of a brush licker, and this does taste a bit like Play-Doh. That's what it reminds me of, I think. I well, probably wouldn't recommend working your brush with these. Okay, I'm going to leave these alone for now. Uh, but yeah, I'm quite impressed with what they can do, especially the, the pre-planned parts. There's some quite good colours there. As I said, there's not much contrast, but there are things we can do to help that. So like we used the wash there, they did give me some washes. So I've gonna dug out this nice white palette. So we're gonna have a play around with some of these because they are called some weird things. We've got Murky Mire, Midnight Shroud, Dickensian Shadow and Victorian Pallor. Now, I'm gonna do some guessing here. I'm gonna say that Midnight Shroud is gonna be our sort of null noil. It might be blue. And I think we're going to get a bit of paper. All right, so the Midnight Shroud again. That's definitely a sort of black, grey colour. This is uh, Dark Tone, which is what I use, tend to use. And they are relatively similar. So it was a good guess. Uh, Murky Mire. Now I'm going to say that that is a reference to Delvin Mud. Okay, that's a, that's a nice looking colour, that. So is that going to be similar to the Strong Tone? Yeah, relatively. I am noticing these are soaking into the paper a lot more. I, I don't know what that means. 
So another one of my favourites from iPainter is Soft Tone. In fact, I'm almost out of it. And they didn't have any in Element Games when I was in there the other day. And then I don't know if this is going to be Dickensian Shadow or Victorian Pallor. Is that going to be a flesh colour maybe? Is this going to be Tensian Shadow? Oh, that is a lovely, that is a lovely yellowy colour. I like that a lot. I do really like the uh, Seraphine Sepia. So I wonder if it's... Yeah. Oh, very close. So that's one of my... I don't think they quite recreated this the same. I think there's still a Games Workshop paint called this. But I don't think it's as good. So this is the black top one. It's been around for a while. And I'd say that is our closest match. So that is good to know. That was the that was the Dickensian Shadow. So Victorian Pallor then. I'm not sure. That seems closer to the soft tone. Yes. That looks... So that's like the soft tone. And that's like a much yellower tone. And then we've got brown and black. These I'm loving so far. These look like they're going to be part of my toolkit. So normally I'd throw wash in the mix sometime before the final highlight. But there's definitely times when I have highlighted up something like this and gone. Yeah, that could do with a bit more contrast. Oh. That is working really nicely. Probably helps that there's a somewhat gloss finish to these metallics. As much as I've loved, been loving playing with these metallics, they're not something I'd necessarily use day to day all that much. I don't. I try and avoid painting with metallics where I can. Like I'll always use them on weapons and armor and stuff generally, but you know I'll do things like painting guns grey and do painted armor on pretty much anything vaguely sci-fi. So then the metal just gets used for chips and weathering. Even on some fantasy stuff I've been doing recently, the weapons have started off shades of brown rather than any kind of uh, metallics, and they'll just get a highlight in the metallics. But washers, now that is something I use at every stage of painting a model. And these went on really nice. I like that. I'm just going to grab a bit of the, the murky mire. I'm just going to try and do a little bit of a sort of pin wash around the head parts here. So that seems to have worked quite nicely. And I will normally do this as well. Knock that off. How's he looking compared to our normal guy? Way better. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry completely. And then give it a real uh, gentle dry brush. I think it was the braid gold we ended up on, which I think was the brightest gold we've got on here. Just, yeah, I think that will really finish it off. So we're just using this darker one just in some of the shadows. So I'm going to finish off the lion. Uh, I'm going to finish off my treasure heap. And I've got a robot carrying a baby here that I want in a very sort of blue steel sci-fi colours. And I'll finish these off uh, completely uh, with sort of regular matte non-metal colours as well. And we'll see how these look on actual minis that I would paint. Before we get there, actually, though, there is one more set that they did send me in that case that we want to try out. And that's these eight gem paints. Black diamond, amethyst, moonstone, tourmaline, ruby, jade, aquamarine, and sapphire. Sapphire, the one that actually keeps catching my eye. To test these, I've got some of these crystal markers. I bought this file off uh, my mini factory the other day to make some nice bright green uh, warp stone for Mordheim. Um, link will be in the description. Uh, these, as you'll notice, are undercoated in grey. So this is my Halfords Grey Primer that I use for pretty much everything. It's uh, nice and matte. It's a good, fair. It's a good primer. Uh, I did these in grey. Tiny amount just because I thought so maybe these colours will pop better over grey. But mostly because I've run out of black. So I'm going to do one of these in each colour. I'm interested to see how these go on as well. I've never used anything even vaguely like this. I'm guessing they're kind of metallic colours, a bit like we made Barbie's roller blades earlier. That's real pretty. It's quite transparent, so maybe black would have been a better idea. I've never seen a paint colour 
quite like this. It's got on real smooth. Just making sure there's no clumps or pooling. It's quite a thin paint, so that's quite good. So it is a little bit transparent, two coats, and it has got a sheen like nothing I've ever seen. That's that's it's got such a sheen that it is in fact winning. Uh, I've still got some coins left, so I'm gonna try it on the black as well. In fact, I'll use that big brush again. Okay, that does, I think, maybe look a bit better over the black. Just to be fair though, I'm gonna wait until he's dry and then give them a second coat. One thing did occur to me while I was making this is that why are strippers, especially, oh, I don't know, don't have that much personal experience, but strippers in movies at least, named after precious stones. Holy Christ, we've been waiting for Sapphire all night and she does not disappoint. Now, I know it's not the fairest test that I work, just worked out doing them over grey, but I do almost exclusively paint over grey these days. So it's actually a very good test for me. Okay, Tourmaline might be a terrible name for a stripper, but it is a very nice looking paint. Don't know whenever I'd use that. Uh, but that is a stunning colour. It's almost reflecting a little bit of blue. But obviously it's this lovely, vivid, sort of pinky colour. I like that. And last but not least, we have got Aquamarine. Well, that's a weird colour. Oh, that is a very weird colour. I could see me using this on something to try and make it look a bit uncanny and magical, to be honest. That or the Moonstone. I am noticing as this top row are starting to fully dry, these are doing what the metallics did and they are getting brighter as they go. All right, I'm gonna leave these overnight and then I'll give them a second coat and let them dry before I give my final verdict on these. But these are interesting, never used anything quite like this before. Okay, after a second coat of each of those, uh, these are nice block colors now and they are lovely. The sapphire, as I suspected, is still my favorite. Absolutely glows. Uh, the tourmaline has got a sort of color shift effect. I don't know if you can see that, but it's sort of initially pink, but it's certainly giving off sort of bluey sort of tones as the light hits it. This moonstone's quite good as well. It actually glows. Still not sold on the black diamond. Uh, or the ruby, uh, but yeah, these are all pretty cool. I don't know what, on the most part, I would use them for, uh, but I've certainly found a use for the sapphire. I've been fiddling with these paints for about a week now, and I did some more tests. I have finished up the lion, uh, and I'm really happy and impressed with the way he's come out. I've used a bunch of the different uh, metals on here, We've got some of the steels uh, and silvers um, on here. And we've got that sapphire in the sort of plasma chamber, which I think is beautiful. The way it catches the light, uh, I think that's really nice. That's going to be my go-to cheap plasma effect now, I think. We've got some nice dull brasses on the end there, which I'm really happy with as well. And just... I mean, once again, compared to the Games Workshop one, so these were the golds I was generally using. Obviously, I've not put as much time and effort into this mini as this one, but just the shininess and the richness of the golds, this definitely wins. Um, I've been really impressed with it. So this mini was pretty much just painted with metallics, uh, and I'm real happy with how it came out. I was having a couple of interesting experiments as well. So this guy, I painted all of the metal parts, just painted the whole model metal, and then went through and touched up uh, other parts in the sort of regular colors. And I had no problem painting over the metal with the colors. And this is, I didn't necessarily stick to the tri triads and stuff, and I tried a few different sort of tones out here and there. Uh, and I'm really happy with the way you came. This is more the way I would paint using these. And that's like my style, but then look at that shine. I think that's quite cool. Painted this little guy as well, same idea. Painted everything was metal first. Um, and just once again, just a different combo of the metals to go for a kind of just a steel rather than a silver 
and just see what, what I could do, like sort of painting rather than trying to dry brush. And I think that's come out quite nicely. And I would say, looking at this, that it doesn't necessarily, none of these effects quite translate in cam on the camera. Um, but that's probably a little bit nicer than I could have done with my regular metals, if I'm honest. Uh, I tried the opposite as well. So this guy was painted entirely red. And I've just gone in and picked out some random details in uh, some silvers and stuff. Uh, this guy's not done yet, but as you can see, oh, there's some gold on the back there. Uh, I've not had any problem. I've got quite good coverage on the bits that I wanted. Um, and we used a bit of the, I think it was the moonstone in there, just to give that little bit of life into the little screen. And that's quite nice as well, I think. Painted a dog as well, just to try and use some of the other sort of brassier colours. Uh, so this was brass with that copper on the collar. And it was just, yeah, once again, just an experiment to see how my paint style would treat these. Now, one thing I did notice is they're not great for actual dry brushing. Uh, there just doesn't seem to be like enough pigment or something. Just it's hard to like just catch the edges, but they're much better at doing like line highlights and sort of manual highlights is what I kind of discovered. Uh, and you can get quite nice effects doing that. Which I think this little guy is kind of how he was done, and I think that sort of shows. That means I wasn't sure it was going to work for my rust effect that I do. Uh, but actually, I'm quite happy with the way my sort of rusty metals come out uh, so for this I use a mixture of sort of like manual highlighting and a bit of dry brushing sort of to give it a metallic overtone uh, and, and a bunch of washes and stuff as well and yeah I'm once again showing that I can paint over the effects comfortably as well so once again this isn't done I'm going to weather this all down and try and make it look nice and beat up but as far as my rust effect goes, I think I can get by. Once again, not quite the sort of sharp, sort of dry brushes I could get with something like, like the base, the GW base paints. Definitely effect I can get behind. Treasure pile, I went for some of the lightest golds and it gleams. But I did try using the sort of light golds and pale golds on the coins. And then more of the coppers and stuff on the, the chest. It does kind of blend in a bit. I don't think if I was designing these paints, I'd have necessarily done this many. I don't think there's enough difference between some of the shades, if I'm honest. Um, had a play with this guy, mixing in some of the uh, ruby sort of pearlescent paint into some of the regular paint. Um, kind of works. Kind of gives a bit of a sci-fi vibe, but it's not something I'd necessarily uh, go for, maybe. But once again, I really like doing the little lenses and stuff in those uh, sort of pearlescent gem paints. And last thing I've been poking with these paints is I found a stray halfling on my desk, as is normally the case. And this is obviously just started, more or less. But I went about starting his armour like I would do this guy. And I think it's coming out quite nicely. And then we have the little duck on his helmet uh, that I think is going to end up being quite nice and quite striking on the battlefield. So the main thing about these is the way they sort of catch the light, I think, better than the Games Workshop paints do. So overall, final verdict, I would say that out of all of these paints, uh, of which there are quite the number, uh, there are definitely some absolutely outstanding ones that I'm probably going to be definitely using sort of day to day. Uh, some of the my favourites were the black and bronze uh, sort of... Uh, a good sort of tin bits type color the combination of the steel and the bright steel I really liked and the graphite as well uh, was a really nice color um, and that had some nice coverage as well I really liked that one and some of the bright uh, the, the braid gold was a standout for me out of all the golds I think uh, for getting this ridiculously bright gold uh, and the polished copper was nice as well uh, and some of the darker, sort of brassier colours I quite liked. But I've yet to sort of choose my favourite when you've kind of got ones that kind of could be kind of interchangeable. I said if I was buying these for me, I wouldn't necessarily have the full range, I don't think. There's some that really impressed me, like the tourmaline, with that kind of slightly colour shift effect. But I don't know 
when I would use it, but it's definitely going to stick in my brain as an option at some point. And obviously the Sapphire was a big favorite of mine. Uh, there were a few that let me down. The Jade, um, I can't really, you know, I didn't, didn't inspire me maybe as much as the rest and the black diamond i don't really see the, the point in it some of the brightest silvers didn't really sort of none of them had that sort of sharpness that something like old games workshop mithril silver did though potentially i just need to keep playing with them a bit for that i said upsides i have never used a, a metallic paint that quite catches the light like these uh, i said this little guy's shiny head keeps coming back to me and i just he just catches the light in interesting ways uh, that he wouldn't if I'd have painted him in my regular sort of paints. They do a tiny bit buff, um, but not enough, I don't think, that to make change anything that's noticeable. Uh, but they are just lovely, sort of rich, and sort of, yeah, almost like true metallic colours, which I do like. Downsides is that they, yeah, they are a bit sort of thin in that uh, when you're trying to, they don't have great coverage. Uh, they kind of go on quite transparent, so that's fine if you're going to sort of build up layers, um, but it doesn't work for getting really good sort of contrast. And I think even some of my coins where I had good contrast, you know, as they were going on, they sort of, it has to sort of merged together. Although that is a more technically, probably a more realistic sort of style, uh, I would prefer the sort of sharp on and off, which is why I think I find it useful to sort of skip out of the sort of trios, try to skip the middle one essentially and just go from the darkest to the lightest just so I could see a few more edges. Like I said, they didn't really dry brush. That wasn't really something that was working for me. It certainly worked to give you a general appearance of metallics. Um, but I think that's because they've got quite a lot of actual sort of metal in there, as can be evidenced by my paint water and the fact it looks like some sort of unicorn gin. But compared to the effects I could get with dry brushing something like this, um, it's not quite the same. You don't get quite get those sharp edges. So I won't be throwing away my Games Workshop base paints either. But a bunch of these are definitely going to enter sort of general daily service and be useful parts to my armory. And I'll let you know in future videos uh, when these are the guys I use because they are definitely quite interesting paints. And before I forget the washes as well, these are interesting uh they are they definitely don't sort of do the sort of really harsh shades again uh, like some of my favorite washes but they are some absolutely gorgeous colors this dickensian shadow is an absolutely gorgeous color and the midnight shroud is a really a nice black works really nice with these metals especially uh, and i've been getting a good use out of the murky mire as well so i'm a big fan of these uh, I just need to play with them more, I think. Uh, but I think if I ran out of this Dickensian Shadow, or maybe even the Midnight Shadow, I'd probably top them back up. I think I would. the best way to sum them up is they're more like glazers, and they will add more of a, a, a shade uh, and a glaze, more so than this sort of strong tone wash that I use uh, that will really get into all the cracks and give me those um, very sharp sort of little... Uh, low lights these will sort of shade the whole area more like a yeah more like a glaze so i definitely need to play with these a bit more but i, I can recommend them so yeah that was the dark star molten metals and if you are looking to pick these up uh, as ever the links will be in the description let me know what you thought down in the comments uh, what would you use these for uh, would you like me to see any me try anything else with them have you used them? Have you got any thoughts on them? And do you think I gave them a fair go? As said, let me know down in the comments or jump on the Discord. And as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.